it's you there. Welcome to Pre-K Sunday. If you don't know me, my name is Miss Ario, and this is my house kitten, Daisy. You see, Daisy said that she would fill in for Boy while he was out bird watching in the Poconos with my brother and his uncle Craig, but I don't even think she knew what she was getting into. <laughs> anyway, we are so excited to teach you kids today. Today we are learning a special story about Jesus when he was a little boy. But before we get into the story time, let's have a time of introduction. So, can you tell me your name? What a lovely name! Now, I have something silly for you to do. If you are watching this video with someone else, like maybe it's a sibling, or a caregiver, or a parent, or a friend, can you introduce yourself to them, even though you probably already know each other's names? It's super silly. So, I'm going to introduce myself to someone else. Hello, it's nice to meet you. My name is Miss Ario. <laughs> it's so nice to meet you too. My name is Bolam. I think you know that already. You've known me like 20 years. Yes, that is right, Bolam. We have known each other for a couple of decades, but it is still fun to introduce ourselves to one another. And after we are done with our introductions, how about we stand up to sing the doxology? Lionel, would you like to lead us? Yes, Miss Sonia, I would love to lead the doxology. Thank you for that song. Please stand if you are able. Why are we whistle the doxology? Um, Lionel? Yes, Miss Sonia. Well, I was thinking we were going to sing the doxology. Remember, the doxology is calling everyone together to praise and worship God, and, you know, we sing it with the kids every week. Well, I was thinking outside of the box. You want outside of the box? No! I love my box! It has daisies on it. How ironic. But no! I mean, I'm having ideas, and I wanted to do something different. Well, I, I'm sure whistling would be fun. Oh, yes, and you see, anyone can whistle any old day. Easy. Um, Lionel, yes, Miss Lionel. Well, this isn't a, you know, it's not like a, a musical or anything, and I think it'd be a little easier for everyone if we whistle while we work. <laughs> Sure, but how about we just, just sing it? Just normal singing so we can use the words to help us help us remember what we're singing about, right? Ooh. Okay, that sounds Gucci. Now, can you please press my button because I can't quite find my limbs in this box. Yes, of course, Lionel. if we have time. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Maybe in the stuffed animal cabaret. Anyway, how about we go on to our rules? Now, why do we have rules? So we know what to do with ourselves! Yes, 
that is right, Kevin. So we know what to do with ourselves. And what is one of the things that it's not really in like the, the rules that we recite every time, but it is a rule that I hope you always remember. Wonderful, Kevin. It is to raise your hand. And now, since you have raised your hand, would you like to help me with my rules? Of course, Miss Ario! The first rule is obey the teacher. And the teacher is you because you're helping us learn. It's whoever else helps us learn. Like Mother Duck is a parent volunteer and she always helps us learn. And then the second rule is listen! Can you turn on your listening ears? Even if you can't see my ears, I definitely have them somewhere. Yes, great job, Kevin. Can everyone turn on their listening ears? Wonderful job. So we have obey the teacher. Listen, what is my third rule? Bo Lamb, would you like to help with that? Um, of course, Miss Aryu. And it's be kind, be safe, and we're kind with our words, and they're safe with our whole bodies. Wonderful job, Bo Lamb. And then my fourth rule, would you like to say it, Chucky? Oh, yeah. It's keep your hands and your feet to yourself. Good job. Let's all do that together. Keep your hands and your feet to yourself. And then what is my last rule? You see, it's the one that Jesus said was my most important rule. <laughs> you know why? Because he said we should love the Lord our God with all of our hearts and souls and minds and strengths and that we should, hmm, Mother Duck, would you like to help me with this? Oh, uh, yes. It is that we should love our neighbors and our neighbor isn't just the people who live next door, <laughs> even though that is what a neighbor is. It's also anyone else who you see. It's maybe the grouchy people in your life and it's maybe the super happy people in your life. It's everybody because Jesus called us to love everybody. And then maybe they will see the love of Jesus and want to know him too. That is wonderful. Thank you, Mother Duck. Now, since we are done with our rules, I think it is meal time, but I haven't heard the... I'll get it now. The mail must go through. Hmm, what could it possibly be? Let's see. <gasps> Daisy, how did you get in the mailbox? <sighs> that sounds like the mail. I'll get it now, sweet girl. Hmm, I don't think that there is a cat in this box. <gasps> what does it say? It says, to Miss Ario and the kids, from God, and hmm, how does God speak to us? Oh yes, he gives us, yes, he gives us the Bible. And the Bible is, hmm, does anyone know what the Bible is? That's right, the Bible is God's word. Yeah, it's the wonderful things he wants us to do about him because he loves us this much. Wonderful job, Kevin, you can raise your hand. Yes, it's the wonderful things he wants us to know about him because he loves us this much. Yes, and maybe when you say this much, you want to do a flip if it is safe in your house. Yes, and you have your safety chicken. I don't know how, how a chicken keeps you safe, but I will go along with it, Sherbet. Anyway, <laughs> God loves us so, so much that he gave us the Bible so we can learn about him and learn about his son, Jesus, who saved us from our sins. Now, we are working on a new memory verse today. It is from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 14. Today, we are going to learn, oh, not upside down, right side up. We are going to learn the beginning of the Bible verse, and then we'll learn the rest of it later. So let's work on the beginning together. It says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly. And can anyone help me explain what grace is? Yes, you see, grace is like the forgiveness that God gives us. Amazing grace, how sweet. Yes, <laughs> wonderful, Sally. Yes, he gives us his grace. He gives us his amazing grace through Jesus, you know, because he forgives us for our sins because Jesus paid the price for them. So it says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly. And what is abundantly? It's like a lot, like, like so, so much. It's like, like as far as Yours can stretch it like as long as my mohawk is. Yes, abundantly means like 
so, so very much like there is never an end to it. So it means that there is never an end to God's grace. It just keeps going on and on. You see, the Bible says that his mercies, which is like his grace, is new every morning. It never runs out on us. <laughs> so let's learn the motions to this so we can put it in our noggins. It says, the grace, and this is a sign language for grace, it's like you're shooting a sun ray over your heart. So the grace of our Lord, and that's, you make an L, and it's like you're putting a seatbelt on, and that's sign language for Lord. So the grace of our Lord was poured out on me. And when I think of being poured out, I think of like when you're pouring a cup of tea, or when you're pouring daisies water. So you're going to say, poured out on me like a wave of something liquid, poured out on me and on abundantly, you are going to stretch your arms this much. Can we all put that together? Can you memorize it in your head real quick? Okay, sounds good. So it goes, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly. Let's do that super, super fast because it's super, super funny if it's super, super fast. Let's do it on the count of three. One, two, three. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly. <gasps> Wonderful job, boys and girls. Give yourselves a round of applause. Blah, 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 blah. And the other way. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, uh, yeah, Miss Larry. Yes, Peggy. I wanted to say something. <laughs> I have an abundant amount of candy canes because I eat candy canes every day, even when it's summer. Oh, yes, you do have an abundant amount of candy canes that um somewhat pertains to the lesson Charmit let's uh, sit up straight all right <laughs> anyway I think it is time for the pineapple of wonder so let's get it hmm what is in the pineapple today it looks like it is our special guest Mary Barry. You see, Mary Barry is an actress and she played Mary for us in a previous week. So can you tell us what you're doing here, Mary? Yes. You see, I'm going to help teach the lesson today. Today, we are learning about Jesus when he was a small boy and Mary and Joseph were his parents. So I'm going to help tell the story. That sounds wonderful, Mary Barry, but before we get into the story, could I say a prayer? <laughs> that sounds Gucci. Wow, have you been hanging out with? Yes, Miss Maria, she has been hanging out with me. Oh, you and me. Oh, you've been hanging out with Lionel and Sally, and that's where you got that funny saying. <laughs> that's so funny. Well, anyway, let's all shake out our hands and put them together, and we will say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the children who are watching this lesson. And thank you that we get to learn about you. Help us to keep on our listening ears and open our hearts to what you have to say to us. Thank you for your love, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs> now, let's get to the lesson. Okie dokie, artichokies. I have a question. Were your mommies and daddies kids once too? Was Miss Ario a kid once too? Oh, yes, of course. Every human being starts as a baby and turns into a kid that turns into an adult. That's just how life works. And you know what? That is how Jesus's life worked. You see, Jesus is God the Son, and he was sent to the earth as a human to live a perfect life and die on the cross for our sins and rise again so that we can forever be a part of God's family. And you know, before all of that stuff happened, he had to grow up. Today, we are learning a story about Jesus when he was still growing up. You see, Jesus's earthly parents were Mary and Joseph. They were given the job of raising him, just like any mommy and daddy. And today, we are learning a story about Jesus when he was a little boy, not much older than you kids. Our Bible story is from the book of Luke chapter 2. It says, The child, which was Jesus, grew and became strong. Can everyone make muscle arms? Nice job! It says, He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. 
That means that Mary and Joseph did a good job of raising Jesus, but he was also given wisdom from his heavenly Father, God. Every year, Joseph and I traveled with Jesus to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. It was a special feast that lasted seven days, and we celebrated what God had done for our people. And when he was 12 years old, we went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while we were returning home, Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but we were unaware of it. Thinking he was in our company, we traveled on for a whole day. Wait, what? Miss Oreo, Miss Oreo, Miss Oreo, Miss Oreo, I have something to say, I have something to say. Okay, Kevin, now what was that one thing? Oh, thank you. You raised two hands. Yeah, because, you know, I think that this is like the time that you forgot me in the closet when you were cleaning your room. But then you noticed after like three minutes and 17 seconds when I yelled, help, help. Oh, kind of like that, Kevin. And then you, you gave me some ice cream and you made me some chamomile tea because it really soothed my nervous stomach. Well, yes, but no, Kevin. You see, people back then traveled in huge groups with their relatives and friends to the city for the Passover feast. Oftentimes, the men would travel in one group and the women would travel in another. So Mary probably thought that Jesus was traveling with Joseph and Joseph probably thought that Jesus was traveling with Mary. But then we noticed Jesus was not with us. And we began looking for him among our friends and relatives. When we did not find him, we went back to Jerusalem to look for him. We were so scared. Oh, I remember one time when I couldn't find Sister Sally. I climbed every mountain, forged every stream, followed every but it turned out I just fell asleep in the litter box. So where was Jesus? Why did he stay behind? Was he bird watching or on a scavenger hunt or in a pie eating contest? Kevin, I don't think those were normal activities back then. Oh, 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 I know, I know. He was loving his neighbor. Well, let's turn on our listening ears and hear the rest. After three days of searching, they found Jesus sitting in the temple courts among the teachers. He was listening to them and, and asking them questions. Everyone who, who spoke to him and who saw him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. After all, he was just a little kid, but he was so, so very wise. When we saw Jesus with all of those important teachers, we were astonished. Could this be? These were very wise and respected teachers, and they were listening to what our son had to say. But at the same time, I was a mother, and I had been worried sick. I said to Jesus, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Then... Jesus said something that astounded us. Why were you searching for me? Jesus asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? You see, kids, he meant that he was in the temple, in the church, learning about God. Since God was his father and he was in God's house, he was in his father's house. That was his way of telling them that he was safe. He was right where he belonged, with his heavenly father. Joseph and I didn't understand at the time. Then we went home to Nazareth, and Jesus was an obedient and loving son. But I treasured all these things in my heart. I knew that Jesus was God's son, and it was my job to love him. After all, God loved us so much that he gave Jesus to the world. The Bible says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. 
You see, God was preparing Jesus for the life that he was going to live on earth. And Jesus wanted to learn more and more about his heavenly father. He wanted to study God's word. And that sets an amazing example for you and me. You see, we should study God's word so we can learn more and more about God's great love for us and so that we can learn to love God more. You know, we learn about God by praying to him, by reading the Bible with our caregivers and family members and friends, and by asking questions about him. You see, God loves it when we ask questions and there are no answers without questions. So let's say a prayer together and ask God to help us learn about him. Can we all shake out our hands and slap them together? And let's talk to God. Dear God, thank you for this story today. Thank you that Jesus set an example for us by learning about you, by reading your word. Lord, thank you that we can learn about you together and help us to be encouraged to read our Bibles and pray to you so we can know you more and more. Thank you for your great love for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Do you like Pineapple Girl? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us for this week's Pre-K Sunday. Daisy and I hope you have a fun day praising and worshiping God and doing your craft. Now, Daisy and I are going to keep playing with Pineapple and Satin Ribbon, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye <laughs> now.